The eastern United States is a roller coaster hotspot where coaster enthusiasts from all around the world go to experience some of the most thrilling rides on earth. With this, there are the states of Virginia and Maryland. With world-class theme parks and Six Flags America, these bordering states are a must-do on a coaster road trip. In this video, I am going to be sharing my unpopular opinions of the top 10 roller coasters in Virginia and Maryland. Before I get into it, I have ridden all of these coasters that I am ranking in this video. I will leave a card up in the top right corner of your screen so that you can check out my parks vlogs playlist and see all of the visits to these major theme parks. Many of these POVs are mine, but if they are not, then I will credit the owner in the top left corner. Plus, I just want to point out that 90% of you guys aren't subscribed, so bruh subscribe because I post new videos every single week. Anyways, let's get started. So starting off at number 10 is Verbolton at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Personally, I love theming. While it isn't the main thing that I look for in the ride, I still have a lot of respect for coasters that have it. Verbolton is very well themed as it takes you through the dark forest while displaying lighting and sound effects in the show building. In addition, there's a drop track at the end, which is super fun and a unique way to end that section of the ride. Overall, Verbolton may not be the craziest or most intense coaster in the world, but it is simply a fun ride that I always love to ride when I go to Busch Gardens Williamsburg. At the number 9 spot is another coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and that is Tempesto. This is a Skyrocket 2 clone that you can find at many other parks, and honestly, other parks do it better. For example, compared to the other Skyrocket 2 that I've ridden, Electric Eel at SeaWorld San Diego, I found that to be way more enjoyable than Tempesto. Nevertheless, Tempesto is still a fun ride with some forceful launches, amazing hang time, and an overall unique experience from many other ride models. Now at number 8 is the only coaster from this park to make this list, and that is Batwing at Six Flags America. Batwing is a Vacoma Flying Dutchman, which has recently been getting removed, so I went in with super low expectations and I got off pretty impressed. Batwing is very forceful, super unique, and overall a super fun ride. It is the only coaster at Six Flags America that I actually rode twice mainly because it had no line, but still, it's a really good ride. Number seven is the first coaster from this park to make the list, and that is Dominator, which is a B&M floorless roller coaster at King's Dominion. I love floorless coasters, and this one is no different, providing a smooth, hang time filled ride that glides through the layout. Usually, I only get one ride on this whenever I go to King's Dominion, but that is mainly because it is so out of the way of the other rides in the park. While this ride may not dominate as one of the best coasters on the list, it is still awesome and definitely something worth riding at King's Dominion. Number 6 is a ride that really moved up in the rankings since I went back to Busch Gardens Williamsburg a week ago for the Coasters and Craft Brews event, and that is Loch Ness Monster. This ride was surprisingly smooth, even when sitting closer to the back. In addition, the first drop as well as the drop into the final loop gave some surprisingly amazing hang time. They did add some trims to the second drop, which is very disappointing, but oh well, it's still great. Loch Ness Monster is really the definition of a fun ride. Even though it's not the most intense, it still provides great airtime as well as some moments where I can almost relax as we're going around a helix or up a lift hill. And that is why I love it. Number 5 is a coaster that is a little bit overrated by some people and that is Alpengeist at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This B&M invert is super intense which honestly brings it down a little bit for me. 
I prefer more graceful coasters like Superman Krypton Coaster or Silver Bullet, which is actually my favorite invert that I've ridden over coasters like Montu or Alpengeist. Nevertheless, Alpengeist is awesome, providing a fun and out of control experience that is unlike anything else in the park, and that is why it is up here at the number 5 spot. At number 4 is a coaster with an amazing first half but a terrible second half and that is Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. The first drop of this coaster is one of my favorites and those three awesome camelbacks give amazing hang time. What? <laughs> give amazing hang time. No, they give amazing air time. There you go. But from there, the coaster enters an ejector airtime filled second half that really kills the chances of Twisted Timbers being the best in the park. The restraints slam into your shins and the bulky lap bar is not at all comfortable as your thighs are thrown into it. But since the first half is good, Twisted Timbers still deserves a high spot on this list. Number 3 is a ride that I think is super underrated by many enthusiasts, and that is Griffin at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Now I love dive coasters, and this ride is undoubtedly the best. The hang time... I said hang time again. <laughs> no. The airtime that you get on both drops is amazing, especially when sitting in the back row. It gives you that amazing falling feeling that I love every single time, which I think is amazing. Plus, even though I do like vest restraints, I can admit that these restraints do let your body float up out of your seat, which allows you to experience the amazing amount of hang time, the amazing amount of air time even more. Overall, Griffin is an airtime machine that I love to ride over and over and over again. Number 2 is another underrated coaster, and that is Apollo's Chariot at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This B&M Hyper Coaster is amazing, supplying me with all of the things that I love in a coaster. Amazing floater airtime that really gives me that falling feeling. It feels like you're gliding or flying through the layout, and it is super long and rewritable. All of these things make it my favorite B&M Hyper, yes, over Mako and my favorite in the park, and my second favorite in the Virginia, Maryland area. And finally, we have number one, the almighty Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. This Intamin Giga Coaster is super fun. While I still can't figure out how tall it is, it looks super tall and intimidating. In terms of why I like this ride, I actually don't like it because of the intensity or the snappy transitions. In reality, the snappy transitions are the thing that I don't like about this coaster. I like i305 because 1. The rewritability of this thing. How I can just stay on the train and ride it over and over and over again. 2. The feeling of gliding or flying through the track. 3. The sense of speed that you get as you fly throughout the track and for the amazing airtime that you get on that big flutter hill under the lift. This airtime moment is aided by the fact that you can't really see it coming, as you're still gaining your vision back after that first turn. All of these things make I-305 one of my favorite coasters, as well as my favorite in Virginia. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. Like I said at the beginning, 90% of you guys aren't subscribed, so what are you doing? Please subscribe, because I upload new videos just like this one every single week. Like I said at the beginning, all of the POVs that I used in this video are credited in the top left corner. I'm also going to put them on screen now and also in the description below. So go check out all of those POVs. And with that, I will see you guys all next time. Peace out.